Okay, part three. Penny, we left off on, and I hate cutting you off. It, these are going to be 40-minute segments, forgive me. We cut off at you are just starting to elaborate on Area 51, Dulce, Tunnels That Connect. If we could just try and dive right back into that and just uh, hit a couple other subjects. Okay. It's been a week, so I may be a little disconnected. But... Oh, start, start from the beginning. Look, Area 51, Dulce, and Tunnels. What Are, are they connected? Okay. Is it true? Which one's worse? I hear Dulce just... Tell me all you know, please. Okay. Area 51 has a weird history. Uh, I've I've been to the gate. I have not been on the base that I have memory of. So I can't tell you what's actually there. But I do know that in the occult circles, they discuss Aleister Crawley and Jack Parsons going there and doing some sort of ritual where they um, summoned a demon. I can't remember the name of the Was it Elbron Hubbard involved? Possibly. And they summoned this demon, and it looked very much like your classic gray. And at that point a lot of weirdnesses started and some of the people that I work with privately have had questions about how that impacted them. So it's something that has affected individuals, not just the country or the space programs or any of that stuff. Now that's about the extent of my knowledge of Area 51. I can talk about uh, Oh, what was his name? There was a man who was supposed to have worked there. Um, the name will eventually there, come. Well, there him. was Bob Lazar and then Phil. That's Schiller, him. Bob Lazar. Bar Bob Lazar. There was evidence that was then removed that he had actually worked there. And he was talking about working on a captured device. Um when I saw his schematics for it, it looked like a Hanabu to me, except that they had made the seats much smaller. So that's um, that's like continuity of story. He talks about a uh, engine that's that we have since found the the element. 115 that he talked about um, and that it does perform the way that he said it would. Uh, other stories that I've heard were that the scientists from Area 51 were required to burn waste materials in a pit and that nearly all of them have died from the poisoning from that. So that was one way to cover their tracks, make sure nobody could talk. If they're dead, they can't talk. That seems to become be becoming a standard military thing in our bases is they burn these toxic wastes and it takes out whoever that they had bur do the burning. That's that's becoming standard policy on our military bases. So that's not shocking that it would happen there too. Um, that pretty much covers what I know about Area Fifty One. <clears throat> okay, what about uh, tunnels underground that are maybe vacuum or left by uh, ancient civilizations? Um, there are tunnels all over the world. Can we elaborate on them? Talk about sections of them. They're how old uh, they. Well, there are some in Cappadocia that are are so close to the surface that people have been building houses and broke through and found them. There are some in Scotland, and they found that they're connected. There have been some collapses that blocked areas, but when they worked through the the ceiling collapses, they found that they connected to the ones in in Eastern Europe and the Middle East. Um, these are really ancient. I mean, really ancient. They can't exactly date them because you can't carbon date rock. But some of the the 
remains that they found in there, uh, pottery, leftover food, uh, residue from from wine presses. They've they've been able to date it to before the last ice age. So these are these are evidence of a cyclic disaster that forced people underground. And they're worldwide. They connect under the Atlantic Ocean. They, so um, they're in both the, all of Eurasia, parts of Africa, and into at least North America. And we hear rumors about similar things in South America. And the ones in South America connect to Antarctica. So they come up in different spots. They found, I think it was 1910, they found remains of a civilization in Antarctica in an area that isn't covered with ice. And they carbon dated those to 20,000 years ago, which would have been two ice ages ago. So uh, we have an ice age approximately every 10,000 years. Wow. So we're getting due. Um, but yeah, that's what the tunnels are about. So there are new tunnels being dug all the time. Um, Phil Schneider talked about he was on a crew that was doing that, and they accidentally bumped into Dulcie Base. Uh, Dulcie Base is a it's a long nosed gray base. They have government permission to be here, and in exchange for doing biomedical research for the Air Force, they are allowed to do whatever they want to whatever humans they capture. There have been as many as 30,000 humans, Americans, held captive in that base and basically tortured or used for reproduction and the babies were tortured. At one point, President Carter got really angry and declared war on them. But they were still allowed to work after that. Um, when was it? 2017. Uh, I was being attacked by a maser in my wall. And we've since put metal to block it. We didn't take it out because we figured they would just put in another one. But it was hitting me in the back. And I used my psi abilities to follow the energy trail to who was doing this to me. And it was one of the, the long-nosed grays sitting at a terminal in Dulcie Base. And I psychically accessed the computer system at there and told all the humans to evacuate. And I'm sitting there being shot in the back this whole time. And I waited 10 minutes for them to evacuate and then used, okay, I'm chipped into the planetary defense system. It's an orbiting weapons platform. And I can pull down a menu and choose a weapon. So I chose the smallest weapon I could find on the list and I chose it because it would focus at a point underground instead of just hitting the top and I blew up the ET cave 
that's under the base. Pluto. There was an earthquake, but it registered approximately 200 miles north. And I had Eliana, the star traveler, and Boris Kasanov, who's in Moscow. The two of them remote viewed the site for me. I didn't tell them what I did. So they came up with different results. Boris got exactly what I did. And basically told me, good job. Ileana said that I destabilized it enough that their earthquake machine wouldn't work anymore. So uh, she has a presentation on her YouTube from then where she remote viewed the site and she did a presentation on it. And uh, so that's my documentation that I did it. Two years later, I remote viewed the site and the Air Force had already rebuilt it. So this is definitely a government sanctioned operation. And this is part of why I don't believe the QAnon folks that oh, children, that starts that off are, for about the first week or two, and then it gets hijacked by the feds, you know? It's, yeah. Yeah. They, they talk about children being rescued, but my experience dealing with these people is that these are government sanctioned operations and, and they're not going to be coming in and stopping anything. So anyone who thinks they are is naive at best. So. Okay. Well, I do have a couple other things I wanted to get to. A while back, I heard on another channel called Terry Carter. Don't know the person. He was talking about how this guy contacted him uh, who found all sorts of gold in a big underground chamber that was left from Montezuma and his men in the Ozarks and somewhere in Missouri. And I didn't okay. know if something like that even sounds true or possible. The guy went into great depths, making me think he wasn't bullshitting about all these um, old objects, Spanish cannons, and the way that these gold plates were smelted, if you will. They were they they were meant to go around the chest. They were shaped kind of like a torso. That way, these Montezuma's men could go up and hike and hide all this stuff. Does that sound even real, or or is that a red herring? The Aztec civilization went as far north as Ohio. Okay, well, so it's within the realm of possibility. The mound builders' culture was an offshoot of the Aztecs. The what builders? Wait, what? The what was it? The mound builders. Oh, the civilization. mound builder. Okay, uh, all right. Okay. Yeah, they're they're an offshoot of the Aztecs and shared a lot of the same religious beliefs. And so, yeah, it's it's within the realm of possibility. I had not heard of it before, so I have. That's that's the best I can do. It's okay. Yeah, I always have a random punch list of stuff to ask. Okay, let's move on and talk about. What do you know about the Vril? I know the Greek covered a lot about it, but I'd like to hear what you have to say about it. If it, you know, how you feel about which, it. Which the Vril, uh, the, okay. the group. So um, um, there is supposedly some sort of ancient little reptilian or something. Can you speak to that? That I've heard has to do with the eye of Raw. This thing crawls inside people's eyes. I, I have not heard of that one not in the programs i've heard about it from people on youtube but Me i've not too. experienced it um Vril was the life force it's another word for chi so this this is my experience of it and the little gesellschaft was an organization of the female relatives of the Tula Society. And they were 
basically channelers who made contact with Aldebaran and the Draco and were able to create the initial blueprints for Hanabu. So, Marie Orsic um, and the likes. The what? Marie Orsic and, and her. Uh, yes. Her there were six of them that everybody remembers their names, but it was an organization with with probably a hundred women, and they all had varying skill sets. But they what they were doing. <clears throat> Nimza had developed engines back in the 1850s and they had brought them to Prussia and the ships that were available were not suitable for warfare and so the ladies were trying to figure out how to put them how to put an anti-grav engine into an actual ship and they were pacifists so it it was interesting when when the chancellor tried to nationalize their work and they basically told him to f off and allowed him to allowed him to send some of his men to watch their work and copy the blueprints but they he what they were not to touch the actual stuff that the ladies had that brings me to another uh, uh, buzzword I wanted you to, to break down for us. And I'm sure I'm not saying this right. It, is it this subcategory to study the occult with the Nazis called the Anunnabe? Or what, uh, what the Anunnabe. Okay, so I said it roughly right. What is you, that? You were close. What, what is that? Um, it was an attempt at an official scientific study of the occult rather than an occult study of the occult it was they were trying to find the science that was buried in the mythology you know, okay. you know that that sound that sounds strange because you know occult, occult only means hidden it doesn't mean evil necessarily so there was a time frame when mathematics was considered a cult and there was a time frame when for the the surf classes that reading itself was considered a cult so that's all it is is this is these were writings that have survived the centuries and they were looking at them from a scientific point of view, like, what are these people really describing? Uh, because a lot of it was science that was written up as religion so that the folks in charge wouldn't burn it all. But there's there was a document from India that, that showed how to build a Vimana and even how to drive it. There was uh, there were documents from from Tibet and Nepal that that backed it up. There were documents from China that showed how to do other things. Uh, there's a lot of technology that's hidden in these documents. In fact, um, that. The Egyptologists are finally coming to understand that the squiggle lines that they've always interpreted as water actually means energy in mm -hmm. Egyptian hieroglyphs. So it's uh, it's an exciting time to be watching these things. Wow, so. that, you covered a lot of things that I wanted to get into. Um, uh, instead of going to my next point, I'll work around it and we'll just segue into the Egyptian culture, um, what was before it? And was it simultaneous with this Atlantis Limeria? Uh, and also too, have you ever heard of a culture called the Etruscans? Oh yeah, the Etruscans I know about. Okay. Uh, the Etruscans are like the original civilization of 
the Middle Mediterranean. They had Sardinia and Italy, and they had ties to uh, Troy in in uh, Turkey. And uh, the Latins were one of their tribes. The, Lat the Latins are why Rome spoke Latin. Roman Empire and Latin became the the underlying core language of European history. Uh, they were um, originally pagan. They had a civilization where women were equal to men. They had their religion was based on magic. Uh, there are at least two current secret societies that are based on their beliefs. What are they? Uh, I can't tell you that. Oh, not a problem. Um, and... Um, they keep telling you that their language is not readable, but it is. There are people who can. Uh, I know several folks who can. And uh, <clears throat> it's um, it's a, the the scientists who've studied them think that they were from Troy. And yet they kept prisoners from Troy and used them as sacrifices. And this is documented in their funerary um, art that they would kill prisoners from Troy as sacrifices in funerals. And so, um, I'm thinking they were related, but not the same. Um, it probably goes back to uh, Gobek Gobekli Tepe times that they were probably related then, rather than than Troy of the Hellenic period. So. Um, Okay, and Egyptians, um, did they, were they visited or did they just discover occult knowledge? Did they produce it? Um, did they work with these Atlantans, Lemurians? What, what, what was the deal with those three cultures? Were they simultaneous? Lemuria was in the Pacific, okay? Atlantis was in the Atlantic, possibly in Western Africa, you know, the Eye of the Sahara. And there are a couple of places where it could be, but the Eye of the Sahara, I guess they call it the Rishad structure, is the closest to the description. Although there's a, a, a thing they dug up in Spain. It was in a bay that's been filled in with sand that might have been part of it. But it was... <clears throat> Atlantis is a name that we have applied to any ancient culture that was in the Atlantic region. So you have to think of it in terms of it wasn't just one. That there have been several of them and we're calling them all the same thing. So there's some confusion. Okay. The Egyptian culture in its beginnings was seeded from survivors of the fall of Atlantis, but we don't know which fall. Mm. So these were people who showed up, their nation had been destroyed. They were already educated. They already had a culture but they were reduced 
to primitive technology and had to start over. Does that make sense? Perfect sense, yes. And uh, so Egypt, Egypt, we have 5,000 years of history jumbled together because they built one temple on top of another. And you can watch how Coptic changes over the millennia because some, some of the writing is phonetic and some of it isn't. And, you know, the ideas will change and they began to worship, they began to worship the diagrams. You start off with a diagram of, of an electrical piece of equipment and you're finding that the later generations are worshiping the diagram and now today you've got mystics who are, are basing entire metaphysics on an electrical diagram. And these things are obviously electrical diagrams. And I, I'm just looking at this and I'm going, you know, what is wrong with you people? Did you never study electronics in school? <laughs> you know, I mean, now we're looking at some of these sites and comparing them to motherboards. And that's exactly what they are. They're motherboards in a worldwide electrical grid. We are finally getting to the point in our own culture where we can see this. But up to now, people looked at it and go, oh, cool. We could worship this. This is where the gods came. I'm sorry. I'm snarky. <laughs> no, I come to you for this. I, I'm very appreciative of this. Okay, so speaking of the Egyptians, I have a couple things to uh, segue into. Um, any comments on the Library of Alexandria and or supposed ruins in the Grand Canyon or, or hier hieroglyphics um, in the uh, Arizona? The Egyptians traveled all over the world. That's something people are, you know, they had shipping. They interacted with the Minoans. The Phoenicians were the same time period, and they went, the Phoenicians regularly went to Britain. They regularly went to North America. Where did you think all the copper for the Bronze Age came from? It came from Michigan. So they got copper from North America. They got tin from Cornwall. They brought it all back to the Middle East. They created the Bronze Age, and that was, what, 3,000 years ago? 3,000, 4,000 years ago, somewhere in that time frame. And uh, <clears throat> so these people were world travelers, and they were all there together. You know, the sea peoples that invaded during the time of Ramses II ended up in Ireland. The Tuatha de Nanan. I probably mis mispronounced that. But there are there are evidences in the Grand Canyon. There are evidences in uh, the Midwest. There are evidences in Western Australia that the Egyptians got there. They went all over the place. They were not, you know, we have this idea that they were primitive people and they're not. Okay. Well, um, is the Library of Alexandria even significant or the Dead Sea Scrolls or is that all just hype? The Dead Sea Scrolls were the writings of the Essenes 
who were a religious sect in Judah, Judea, at the time of, of Jesus and John the Baptist. And Jesus and John the Baptist were members of that sect. So, yeah, if you're going to understand the New Testament, you need to understand the Dead Sea Scrolls to have the context of the cultural context of where they came from. Um, the Library of Alexandria was burnt first by the Romans and then by Napoleon. And it's probably the greatest loss of information about the history of the world that we've ever had. You know, uh, some of these folks out there are talking about that we're a species with amnesia. The burning of the Library of Alexandria is why. They had the records going back all the way to the end of the last ice age. Do you know how much stuff we've lost? It boggles the mind. You think it might have um, been done on purpose and or that these documents or scrolls or whatever was in that library was taken and then burned? Un, uh, you know, and then kept in underground or secret societies? I think some were taken. The cherry picked. They were cherry picked as to what these people wanted to keep. And my feeling is that a lot of them are in the Vatican Library. That, that, okay. I was going to bring up Leo Zagami in the Vatican next. Let's just, let's just touch on it while we're here. Why would the Vatican have a vault? Why would. Um, I've heard rumors of a gray pope, white pope, black pope, and red yeah. of human skin. I've even heard a guy, uh, what Alex Kyer, talk about the elevator operator of the Vatican vault, saying that there's glowing rocks from the pyramids and and all sorts of foil that you, if you crumple up, it'll pop right right back to its shape from crusades. I mean, I don't know if any of this is true. What can you debunk or comment to or just talk? I've about never been there. Okay, I've been out of the United States to fly over Canada to go to Alaska, and I've been to Tijuana a couple of times. Tijuana's in Mexico. Otherwise, I have spent my entire life in California. So what I know is from reading and from the internet, I have not been to Italy. So I haven't seen what they have. But I've heard incredible things about their collection from people who have been there. What can you divulge that is the most crazy or, or ancient? Uh, they're built on top of a necropolis. And they claim that that the... Uh, that St. Peter's Basilica is built on top of his actual grave. Um, and they have a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff from the early time of the church and from Rome and from the Etruscans. They basically went through and collected all kinds of stuff. Now, people will tell me that the period of time from 400 to 1400 didn't exist. Frankly, that's bullshit. Uh, that was when the Franks, the Visigoths, the Huns, uh, the Lombards came through. What they don't tell you is that there were a series of volcanic eruptions in Iceland that basically destroyed crops for off and on for 400 years. And that in the middle of this, they didn't have enough to eat. They had several waves of the bubonic plague and measles and 
months. That by the time the Lombards got into Italy, a city of Rome that had been two million people at its height was down to 25,000 people. And most of them didn't know how to keep things running. The Vatican was performing the administrative functions for what was left of the Western Roman Empire. The Roman emperor, emperors had left and gone to uh, <gasps> Spoleto, uh, Vincennes. There's another city that they moved to. And then they moved to Istanbul because the volcanic eruption had not screwed up Turkey as bad as it had Western Europe. But by that time, the plague had gotten to Turkey. So it was it was a mess. We in that that thousand year period, we lost two thirds of the people of Europe. And so when the Germanic tribes came in, there wasn't this big war where everybody's murdering everybody like they're presenting it in the media today. They were walking into a to a land where people were sick and dying, where the the infrastructure had collapsed, where the few people that were left were trying to hold it together. And they just basically the warlord would walk up to the guy in charge and say, I'm marrying your daughter and taking over. And the guy said, great. So there was continuity. You had Merovingian kings building basically coliseums in places like Orléans. And the people, the basic population continued to speak Latin or their local version of it. There was total continuity. All that changed was was who the boss was. Penny is cutting us off. I'm gonna send you a new link. Okay. <laughs>